Well, welcome back. It's been a while since we've been dis had this discussion. Um, we're going to be talking about Newton's second law tonight. Specifically, um, you will learn how to calculate the amount of force applied to an object and how that force causes an acceleration on the object it is applied to. Um, some equations that we'll be going over here specifically, I want to draw your attention to these bottom three right here. Uh, these will be the ones we deal with here for the next couple of days, all dealing with force. All right, Newton's second law. A net force acting on an object causes that object to accelerate in the direction of the force. A net force acting on an object. So when something, as we learned from Newton's first law, pushes or pulls on an object, it's going to cause that object to accelerate, which means it's going to either increase in speed, decrease in speed, or change direction. The way we can calculate that force uh, on an object is our equation down here at the bottom, F equals MA. Uh, here is the force that is applied. The mass is what's representing the object and the acceleration uh, that the object um, feels. Well, the first example of this is weight, right? Every day we feel the force of gravity. Uh, the force of gravity that's acting on us is our weight. So when we say, uh, what is our weight, we're saying, really, what is the force of gravity? Uh, it's not 9.8, that's the acceleration due to gravity. The force of gravity is our weight. And the way we find that weight is we take our mass and we multiply it by gravity, which is 9.8. So in our first example, um, I want you to try finding this object's weight, this apple's weight. This is from our example down here. I'm going to go ahead and pause it, give you a few moments. All right, we're back here. Uh, I've went ahead and filled this in, but the force of the weight, this equation isn't F times W as it appears over here. Uh, it's really F subscript W. It's a little lowercase w. And it is mass times gravity, or 2 times 9.8, which gives us 19.6 newtons. So this apple is feeling a force of gravity that is equal to 19.6 newtons, and we call that the apple's weight. Another example of force would be Hooke's Law. Um, Hooke's Law deals with springs or elastic items. Um, F is a force exerted to get back to resting position. So what we're talking about here is we're really measuring the force that the spring, let's say, is exerting. And the reason it's exerting that force is because it's trying to get back to its natural position or its resting position. Uh, in this equation, we've got some uh, variables. K is the spring's constant. Um, there are some springs, like the spring in your binder, that is very weak. It would have a very small K constant. There are some springs that are used in heavy machinery, such as tractors, that hold heavy things in place, and those have a very very large K constant. In this case, X, X is telling us how far have we stretched it. How far from that resting position is it? Have we stretched it 30 centimeters? Have we stretched it 1 centimeter? Uh, you know, I had a tractor uh, spring I had to replace this summer, and to get it to stretch about 1 centimeter, took every single bit of energy I could possibly pull, force I could exert on it to get it to go one centimeter. It had an incredibly high spring constant. The negative in this case uh, says the force is in the opposite direction has been pulled. So what they're saying here is we've got the spring and it's been pulled. Uh, someone pulled it to the right. Well, the force from Hooke's Law the force from Hooke's Law is telling us that that force is in the opposite direction that it was pulled because the spring wants to go back to where it was. So the negative tells us that the force is always in the opposite direction that it's been pulled. Well, now we've got some more examples for you. Here's another example. There's a car that has a mass of 100 kilograms. It is accelerated from 4 meters per second to 10 meters per second in 10 seconds. First question is, what was the force created? Well, the force created, what caused this car to accelerate like this is really what it's asking. Um, I'm going to give you a little hint here to get you started. 
um, it, we're going to have to use this equation to solve for the acceleration. Once you've solved for the acceleration, you can find the force that was exerted on this car. Why don't you go ahead and see if you can't find that. Okay, I went ahead and filled some things in for us to save on some time. Uh, but I used our velocity final equals velocity initial plus acceleration times time. I plugged in the fact that it was going 10 meters per second. It was uh, it was going 4 meters per second. It accelerated up to 10 meters per second in 10 seconds. I put that in for the time. The acceleration then turns out to be 0.6 meters per second squared. I then plug that in for the acceleration. And it tells us that this car weighs 100 kilograms. So the force that must have been applied to the car to cause it to accelerate had to be 60 newtons. All right. The next part of this problem here says, what is the weight of the car? Well, I'll give you a hint here again. There is our equation we have for weight. I'm going to go ahead and pause it and give you a chance, a sec, a chance to solve for that. Well, I've went ahead and filled in the information here. The mass was 100 kilograms. Uh, gravity is 9.8. When you multiply them, you, you get 980 newtons. So that right there is the force um, due to the weight of the car. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and work this problem out. Uh, it's not mandatory for you to be able to write this one down. Uh, but I would work through this as well. Maybe pause it, stop it, try to work it out uh, along the way. The first one says, what is the weight of the car? And as I look at this then, I see, or I think to myself, my equation for weight is mass times gravity. Well, what is the mass? It's 1,000 kilograms times 9.8. So my first one then here then has a weight of 9,800 newtons. What is the deceleration of the car? Well, the car decelerates if it's going 25. So this right here is its VI. It's VF. Well, the front bumper, and it says it stops. So it's crashed into a tree. The front bumper's crashed, and it stops. So VF is 0 meters per second. The time it gives us uh, it doesn't give us a time, but it does give us a distance, all right, a displacement. So that could be xf minus xi is 0.3 meters. Well, to find that deceleration, I'm going to say vf squared equals vi squared plus 2 times a times that displacement. And that's 0 squared. equals 25 squared plus 2 times a times 0.3. So I went through here and found this deceleration to be negative 1,041.7 meters per second squared. It's negative because it's decelerating. Next question here is, what force does it take to slow the car to stop? Well, I have the acceleration of the car. We know the mass of the car is 1,000 kilograms. So to find that force, I would take 1,000 times that acceleration of negative 1,041.7. And we get an answer then of negative 1041700. Zero and it's negative, meaning that force was in the opposite direction that the vehicle was moving. What is the K constant of the front bumper? Well, I now know the force. And the bumper, which acts like a spring, is, the, is what absorbed all that force. So I can say then, uh, I'm still running out of a lot of room, that force equals negative Kx. And the force, in this case, which is negative 1041700 equals k times 0.3. k 
in this case turns out to be 3, 4, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that would be Newton per meter. So what we have is an incredibly strong, incredibly strong spring here on these front bumpers. Or the bumper that absorbed uh, had this type of K constant to it. Well, hey, we've talked a lot about Newton's second law today. We've related it to several different things. I'll see you on the flip side.